The National League is the fifth tier of English football. And although it's a league, it's a non-league league. A working man's league. Hence the Vanarama sponsorship. So here are the National League 2022-23 stadiums. Located in a particularly leafy area of town, we have Recreation Ground, home of Aldershot Town. There's an interesting assortment of stands with about a 50-50 mix of seats and terracing. There's plenty of blue and red on show, and I know I talk about trees far too often on this channel, but it's pretty cool that there are actually some trees within the stadium itself. J. Davidson Stadium, Altrincham. They've adopted a two stands are better than one approach on the southern side of the ground, with the larger one, I guess you'd call it the main stands, looking quite distinctive. All the remaining sides are terraced, including an uncovered terrace, which from what I've learned about English stadiums in the past is most likely for the away supporter scum. Not my words. The Hive Stadium, Barnet. This modern stadium is one of the best in the league in terms of amenities, but it had a bit of an odd development. It was initially intended for use by Wildstone, another club in the league, back in the early 2000s. But things didn't work out financially, and it wasn't until 2013 that the stadium was finished. Albeit an altered design and for a different club, obviously. Which is good, because I prefer Barnett's colours and the Hive Stadium is a pretty cool name. Meadow Park, Boreham Wood Meadow Park is located in a park on Meadow Road called Meadow Park, which doubles as both a meadow and a park. The ground itself doubles as the home of Arsenal women and under-23 teams, and so has received some funding from the Gunners. The colour scheme remains as the black and white of Boreham Wood, even on the recently built North Bank Terrace that references Highbury Stadium, Arsenal's former home. Looks good. Hayes Lane, Bromley. As with most grounds in the league, it was built piece by piece, constantly changing over the years. And I'm gonna play a little game here. One of these stands was built in the 21st century. Can you guess which one? Yes, it's this one. He all got that right, except for Tim. You disappoint me, Tim. Most of the rest of the ground is uncovered terracing, so this really is the place to be on a rainy day. You really are quite stupid, Tim. Technique Stadium, Chesterfield. 13 million pounds mightn't seem like much. There are plenty of houses in London and neighbourhoods in Chesterfield with that price tag. However, it was one of the more expensive grounds in the league. But I think they got good bang for their pound. I quite like the exterior that's made up of red brick and that navy blue cladding. And on the inside, it's a clean and simple all cedar. What else do you need? Chigwell Construction Stadium, Dagenham and Redbridge. I don't believe the entire stadium was built by Chigwell Construction, given that the company is 80 years younger than it. But maybe they did some work on it, like this stand perhaps? I don't know. As you can see, the club gets the nickname Daggers, yet they don't let you bring knives into the ground to show support. And I thought Australia was a nanny state. Jesus Christ, man. Not even knives into the ground? Meadowbank, Dorking Wanderers. This newly rebuilt but extraordinarily simple stadium is the smallest in the league. There are just a couple of small seated stands, as well as a couple of supplementary terraces and then just some flat standing room. That's it. There is a nice hilly backdrop though, I guess. Silver Lake Stadium, or 10 acres as it's erroneously referred to. It's closer to two acres. Home of Eastleigh. Prior to 2014, it was an incredibly basic stadium with about half of the field having nothing but concrete on the other side of the fence. But after a redevelopment where a couple of stands were built and one was extended, there is just this one large gap in the stands. It's a decent little stadium now. The Shea, Halifax Town. 
For the most part, it's a pretty standard, fairly modern stadium, with some terrace stands, some seated stands, but I love this quaint old-fashioned stand to the west. And with those trees peeking out over the top, it's quite picturesque. But yeah, this stand is one of those that you don't really care if it's outdated or has obstructed views, you still want it to stick around, because the stadium just wouldn't be as good without it. Gateshead International Stadium Gateshead Ew, what is that thing surrounding the field? How grotesque. It was actually a track and field stadium to begin with. Football arrived in the early 70s. Other than the detraction that is detract, it's actually a decent little stadium with fairly modern facilities. There's just a long way between the spectators and the field. Not something English fans are used to. York Road is the home of Maidenhead United, who have been here since it opened in 1871, which is quite remarkable. Back then, of course, football was still in its early stages of development, and they had yet to outlaw the use of spears. It's just not the same nowadays. No knives in the stands, no spears on the field. It's not football anymore. There are just over 500 seats in the house. I like what they've done here. Elevated above the River Medway is Gallagher Stadium, Maidstone United. Gallagher were actually the ones that built the stadium, and they've done a good job. Oh, and to be clear, I'm not talking about the insurance company with the same name, obviously. Also, props for the solar panels on the roof. You don't see enough of that on English stadiums. That's because you never see the sun. Well, you say that, but at the time of recording, it's mid-30s and sunny in Maidstone. So... They're being put to good use. And just when you're thinking, Gee whiz, so much meadow action, I'm not sure my heart can take another stadium named after a meadow. Bam. Meadow Lane, not County. It's situated across the river from their now Premier League neighbours, and it's the biggest stadium in the league. It certainly looks like it belongs higher up the pyramid, and that's because not County, we're in League One as recently as seven or eight years ago. Oh, and for those who aren't familiar with English football, League One is the third tier because... Anyway, it's looking good for 112 years old. Boundary Park, Oldham Athletic. I do quite like it when each stand is built in a completely different style, the main stand being the only modern one. That contains the press boxes and luxury suites. Interestingly, rather than an artificial turf field or some sort of hybrid grass, they are unique in the league in that they have a permafrost field. It's known as the coldest ground in professional English football, for which it gets the nickname Ice Station Zebra. Wait, what have zebras got to do with the cold? They live in a tropical climate. The Sands Venue Stadium, Scunthorpe United. It's a fairly straightforward stadium, with all the stands being pretty much the same, no fancy exterior, and no cantilever roofs. So the Irons fans get to look at plenty of iron throughout the game. Other than that, it's a perfectly serviceable stadium, I guess, but they are planning on redeveloping it in the near future. Damn Sun Park, Solihull Moors. This ground is a very odd mix of styles. You've got a stand with several roofs that don't stretch the length of the stand, leaving some spectators exposed. There's also this interesting balcony thing. Perhaps there are some luxury suites up there. The way it backs onto another football field in a perpendicular manner is also quite odd. Yeah, I guess it does deserve the name Dame Sun Park. Roots Hall, South End United. This old school stadium is seemingly on its last legs, with it set to be replaced by a new stadium built elsewhere. But, while it's not in the best condition and might be lacking in certain areas, it does seem to have plenty of character. I particularly like this double decker stand which is ironically named the High Tech South Stand. But actually it's named after a footwear company which is also past its prime. Perfect synergy. Plainmore, Torquay United who celebrated 100 years at the stadium just last year. The name Plainmore would suggest that it'd be a bit dull, but the bright blue exterior is anything but that. 
It's actually very fitting considering the coastal locale. Torquay of course being right by the iconic Bells Beach and the birthplace of both Rip Curl and Quicksilver. You know what, I may be mixing up my Torquays there, but it is by the coast. It's just as vibrant on the inside if not more so. Grosvenor Vale, Wildstone United. It might not be the smallest, but it's probably the most grassroots stadium in the league. There are less than a thousand seats, and about the same percentage of the capacity comes from people just standing behind the fence. You would have thought that the now multi-billionaire Wildstone Raider would have contributed to an upgrade. But fame changes people. Lathwaite Community Stadium, Woking. I have to tread carefully here, Woking is the most politically correct club as the name suggests. This is an interesting one, the largest stand is not along the sidelines as is usually the case. But just like at Hayes Lane, they've built themselves an impressive modern stand and the bright red seats certainly stand out in an otherwise outdated stadium. Oh no, can, can I say red? Just in case, I do apologise to all the redheads and the sunburn people out there. <laughs> Same thing. Oh no, oh no, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Racecourse Ground, Wrexham. This is actually in Wales, which makes the National League an international league, but also a domestic league, because you can have a country within a country apparently. It is a ridiculously old stadium, and it does have some older features, the terrace stand known as the Cop in particular. But for me, the standout here is the Macron stand, which is built in a distinct style as you can see. Hewish Park, Yeovil Town. The local cricket ground better be called Yeovil Oval. No, Johnson Park. Well, at least that rhymes as well. Uh, Hewish Park is nothing out of the ordinary, with three covered stands, one of which is terraced, and one uncovered terrace that is the home of the away supporters, of course. Why wouldn't you call it Yeovil Oval? What's wrong with people? York Community Stadium, York City. We end with the newest stadium in the league, and one of the more modern ones. It's also one of the least old ones and one of the most futuristic ones, whilst maintaining a contemporary style. It's actually quite conventional for the most part, but definitely not the colour scheme, due to the fact that it's shared with a rugby league team that had to blend the colours. Looks good though. There are also some attached amenities such as a swimming pool, basketball court, five-a-side pitches, etc. And those were the National League stadiums. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.